Hi everyone, it's Peggy Merwin with Stamp with Peggy. Um, tonight we are going to make a box, like a gift box, for one of the little mini bottles of wine. Um, an interesting thing that I have found with these is that those little boxes are, or those little bottles of wine are all different sizes. Hi Robin, hi Cheryl. Um, these little things are, some of them are a little fatter than other ones and shorter. That would be me. Some of them are a little taller and thinner. Um, so you may have to adjust depending on the size of the bottle, but I'm gonna give you directions and sizes for, however you say it, Sutter Home Cabernet Sauvignon, of course, is the best. Hi, Annie. <laughs> okay, so let me get my laptop up while we're kind of waiting. Whoops, adjust the sound. Okay, so now I can see. Hi, Glenda's with us. Okay, so you guys know I'm not one to sit and wait around for others while they're coming. So let me switch you down onto my table. So again, um, somebody, I think Cheryl said the other night, we don't close our eyes. We just go for the roller coaster ride. So close your eyes if you get sick, and I'm going to flip you down at the bottom. Okay, so hang on just a second. All right, let's get it back up here in the stand. All right, now let's pull it forward a little bit. All right, I think we're good. I think you can see my workspace now. All right, hi, Miss Tammy. I knew you'd join for this little wine bottle deal. Okay, so here's the project, okay? Pretty, pretty. It's using the Love You Always designer paper and the foil. And then I'm using Rococo Rose. Um, because of this designer paper, I have used more Rococo Rose in these last month and a half than I have probably in the last two years. Okay, so again, I have the Suter Home bottle of wine. You can do big ones too, but how fun, you know, what, these are like 7 or $8 for a four-pack. So to be able to give those out as little gifts, I have a couple people in mind on these two right here. Okay, so we're starting out with a six and a half by eight inch piece of cardstock. This time I'm going to use the Blushing Bride. Hi, Sue. Hi, Tina. Okay, and so I have scored it at one and a quarter. And I'll bring this in so that you can see it at the same time. One and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, and seven and a half. Okay? So all the way across, you have one and a quarter inch, you have six one and a quarter inch spots, and one half inch spot. And then you're going to turn it, and you're going to score it at one and a half inches, down the whole length, and then you're gonna turn it again and score it at one and a quarter. So the top is a quarter of an inch smaller than the bottom, okay? And then we're gonna turn it to the wrong side and we're gonna take a ruler. I know, we're into measuring. I know you can do it. Okay, I'm gonna skip this first half inch and I'm lining my ruler up on that half inch mark, okay? And then I'm gonna do three eighths of an inch, and then I'm coming three eighths of an inch away from the next score line. So three eighths of an inch, and then three eighths of an inch, all the way across. So three eighths of an inch on each side of the score line. Hi, Debbie Cox from North Carolina. Okay, all the way across. So you can see all my little hash marks, okay? Then we're gonna measure three-eighths of an inch and we're gonna draw a line across the whole thing. Again, this is on the inside, so you won't see it, okay? And then we can get rid of the ruler and the pencil, all right? Then we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna cut off this half-inch tab 
on the top and the bottom. The middle part is what holds the little container together. Okay, so you have this. And then on the bottom, we're going to cut on the score line up to the one and a half inch score line on all six lines. Okay, so you have little flaps all over. Now we're going to turn it back to the wrong side and we're going to be at the top where we put all those little hash lines. And then we're going to cut on those top little marks. Okay, we're just cutting that chunk out and leaving kind of a little triangle. And we're going to the score line. You'll still have that 3 8 inch line going across to all of them. That's to mark so that we know where to hole punch. Everybody watching intently? I'm not seeing many comments. How about some hearts or thumbs up or thumbs down if you don't like it? Okay. And one more. All right. Let me get rid of all those little pieces here so that I don't throw them on the floor. Okay. So there's our box. Okay. So now we're going to take our bone folder and we're going to burnish on all the fold lines, score lines. Across the bottom, makes it easier to fold the whole thing up. Yes, Sue, I will put the measurements on my blog. Um, I'll try to add it on to this video afterwards. And yes, Tammy, it would be an adorable. You could even do little boxes for of the guys, if not wine, little whiskey bottles or something, and do a cute little one. Okay, and then we're going to burnish across these top tabs that like to keep popping up on me. Okay? All right. And then now I got to find my other little stashes here. Okay. Now I have six pieces of the Blushing Bride foil from the Love You Always that are one inch by three and three quarters. Okay. Those are going to go on there. Uh oh. Did I cut them all too long? Hang on just a second. Not this one. I did because I shortened it a little bit. All right, let me grab my paper trimmer. We got to fix that. I forgot that I did that. Okay, I apologize. So let's get that measurement again. All right, so our open space here is three and three quarters. So we have to cut these pieces at three and a half by one inch. And there are six of them. Okay, and then we have the designer paper. I'm using the Blushing Bride one. And it is seven eighths of an inch wide by three and three eighths. So I need to cut a quarter of an inch off from these also. All right. Get that out of the way and these little scraps out of the way. Now we're back to it. So now we are going to adhere all of these designer papers <clears throat> onto the foil. And yes, Tina, this paper is so pretty. This is in the spring catalog, right in the beginning of the catalog. I guess that would be helpful, wouldn't it? I get so excited about the project, I kind of forget to show you exactly what it is that I'm using. 
Okay, so here's what I'm using is the Love You Always designer paper, the Love You Always foil. Um, we are going to use one of the hearts, and then I'm also going to use some of the ribbon. Um, the hearts and the ribbon are currently on back order or not orderable. Um, they will be coming in again soon. Okay, so again, we are back to putting this onto... Tammy, this is definitely one of those projects I can see you making a whole bunch of, like the old days when you made the mini albums for all the eighth graders. And she'll be making up, buying cases of these little bottles. <clears throat> and these are Kaylee and Max's, Kayla and Max's colors too, right? Okay, two more to go. Yes, I have definitely been sharing my favorite papers with you guys. The True Love and the Love You Always. Um, I just pulled out tonight to design for my fine arts uh, floral gallery. And playing with that paper. It's the first that I've played with that. So I'm having fun with that one too. Okay. Now we are going to put those on all of those panels. Okay. So again, and we can start any place. The good thing about this paper is there's really not an up or a down. I mean, this one looks like it's upside down, but then this one's right side up. So that will still work. Um, Sue, I think the ribbons are supposed to be, or the um, heart charms are supposed to be coming in stock this next week. So you should be getting those soon. The blushing ribbon is a not orderable right now. Um, I think that's the 1st of March before that is available again. That's why when you see something in the catalog, it's best to order it right away before it goes on back order. All right. And two more. Okay. Um, you guys make sure that you also tag friends that you think would enjoy these. Um, Annie did, what, a week or so ago, and that's where Tina found me and started joining in. Um, yeah, Tammy, Mary Merlot would be a good one for the guys, too. Okay, now remember the line that we drew up here. Now, we're just going to take, and I'm taking a quarter inch punch this time because my ribbon is a little bit wider. Last time I used an eighth inch, but my ribbon is wider, so I want a little bigger hole to make it easier to thread it. Okay, now we have our holes all across there, and then... Use a nice sturdy adhesive and the seal plus or the seal, regular seal. Oh, sure. And I just ran out. I think is super strong by itself. All right. So you put adhesive on that half inch flap. You fold it over. And then this is how I do. It's the easiest way to me to get a box. Hi, Nancy Sears. Thanks for joining. Okay. Look at that. We're getting a box. Okay, now, and I still have not found the right thing to fit down in there to help me um, hold them, hold that into a shape is what I'm trying to say. Let's try to poke those in at the bottom, okay? So look at this. You could have a square box. We're going to have an octagon, and I want my seam which is here in the back. Okay, so we are going to, and I'm gonna use green glue on this just because it's easier to get the adhesive on. Okay, and so we're gonna do that. Hold it for a second. And if you go straight across, I think 
Nope, that's not going to be. That's coming out more square. This is where if you have something round that you can put inside of it. Hang on, maybe this works. Is this container the right size? Ha! There we go. Look at that. All right. Yay. Hi, Luann. Luann's the winner of the mini cut and emboss machine from my um, Super Bowl party. Yay. Okay, and then we're just going to glue that one down. And then this one down. Hold them for a second. And then some glue there and some glue there. So again, looks hard, definitely is not. Okay, you saw the score lines, which again, I will put the measurements on. Um, but super easy. <laughs> it's actually um, citric acid. So just look around your house for something that is about two inches across. And that fit right down in there. That worked really, really well. All right. Now, the other trick that I want to show you is... When you're working with ribbon, we all hate trying to poke it in and out of those holes, okay? And this is the Blushing Bride ribbon that we talked about. One side is very gold, one side is more plain, so either side matches really nice. I think this time I'm going to go with the gold, all right? And my seam is there. I always like that in the back. So here's my front part. And so, and I don't have a very big needle this time, but let's see what we can do with it. Okay, so we're gonna start in the front and then we're gonna come up the next one. I guessed about an 18 inch piece of ribbon but I just use it right off the bolt or the roll, okay? And then we're gonna go down the next one. And then you just keep turning your ribbon as you're going. Oops, 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 oops. And then we're coming up the next one. Down the next one. up the next one and then we're going to come back up the first one okay and before we tighten it all up to tie it let's slip our bottle of wine in there hi miss sandy sandy's up north snowmobiling as if it wasn't cold enough around here, she had to go up north where it's even colder. All right. And then you're just going to pull it so that it closes. And then we're just going to tie it. Except, I think, I want a little bit more ribbon for my bow. Well, you know what? There we go. That'll work. All right. I'm scooting you all over here. Sorry. Okay. So I tied it once. Now I want my needle again. Now you need to have a shower. Oh, a baby shower or a bridal shower. Oh, no fooling. I guess this wouldn't be real appropriate for a baby shower, would it? Um, how about a COVID is over party? Oh, come on. <laughs> I think we'd have to make a whole bunch of these for a COVID is over party. What do you think? 
Okay, sorry. Okay, rethread that. Now, I used the many hearts again, and I cut out one of the little hearts with the polka dots. I turned it, and I used the Punch Party Hostess stamp set. I used the For You, okay? And I stamped it in Blushing Bride. Oh, and for those of you who watched Lunchtime Stamping with Peggy yesterday, um, this is my giveaway. Um, tomorrow, I'll go through all the comments from yesterday's lunch and from tonight. And then tomorrow, I'll do a drawing and one person will get this stamp set. Okay. All right. Back to this again. And so, I stamped the For You. Now, I'm going to take my needle and my ribbon. Now, this Again, is fatter ribbon, so this could be interesting. It's going to make my hole a little bigger, but that's okay, I think. <laughs> We'd all be happy to pitch in for that party. I think you are right. All right, that is not going to work for me. So, tell you what, I need to grab a bigger punch. I didn't think about this when I changed the ribbon to a wider ribbon. All right, so we're just going to come in here and punch a little bigger hole. And then... All right, yay! Okay, and then I'm going to take one of the hearts... And I'm going to thread that on my ribbon. And then I'm just going to tie a bow. Hi, Gail. Better late than never, always. All right, let's get that little heart down where we want it. Okay, and then, I don't know about you guys, maybe it's because I'm left-handed, but I have much better luck when I tie my bows upside down. Okay. Oh, what was Luann's idea? Party in the cafeteria at Marion Central with friends and stamping. I hope soon. I can't do that until the kids can be back in the building, for sure. But I am so ready for a ginormous stamp class where we can all be together. I know, Sue. I used up the one in the box, and then I had another spare one on the side. All right, seriously, this is just fighting back with me like crazy. I think it's because it's wider ribbon than what I used before. And I'm trying to turn it so that the gold shows. All right, almost, almost. <laughs> you guys are paying attention. That's good. I like it. All right. I think that's the best I'm going to get with this chunkier ribbon. All right, so let's trim that up a little bit so that it's presentable. Okay, and then my hearts, the resin hearts. Yeah, that's why you didn't get. No, I've had these hearts since we could pre-order back in November. <laughs> okay, so I'm using the resin hearts, the white and the red, and I'm using a light Calypso Coral blend. You guys know how much I love these. And then we're just going to color it so that it gets a little Blushing Bride look to it. It is Calypso Coral. And then we're just going to put that little heart right there. And ta-da! Now we have two adorable little bottles of wine to be able to gift to those we love who love wine as much as we do. 
How cute is that? And again, very quick. It is 725. With all of my talking and my forgetting and having to recut paper. Okay, so you could assembly line these babies in no time. I have two more bottles of these up there that I think I will go ahead and do those also. But we all know chocolate goes fabulous with red wine. Um, I am a red wine drinker. I am not a white wine drinker at all. So I have some Dove chocolates that I decorated. Just put onto a piece of cardstock. So again, sweet and simple, but there's a lovely Valentine's gift. Okay, cute, cute, cute. So this time, we're going to do it with the Blushing Bride so that we have one that matches. Now, the chocolates, unfortunately, I didn't pay enough attention to try to get maybe one that had some silver or gold or whatever. But So this is 2 inches by 8 inches. And I scored it at an inch and a half. And then I'm taking my punch. And I can't remember the name of this one. All right. And I'm going to put it right in, all the way in, and punch it. Gives us the pretty little top and gives us a little hole for putting ribbon through. Okay, then once upon a time, Stampin' Up! carried these little two by eight inch cello bags. They're also called, you can get them at the M store. Um, they are called pretzel rod bags, I think is what it is. Um, they come in a big package. I happen to have some left. Um, so I use that. <laughs> and yes, we would look like the people on the street, right? We could just drink it right out of here. How cute is that? Okay, so this was a two by eight inch bag. I cut it off. I cut off one and three quarters inch. And then I took my three Dove heart chocolates and glue dots. Yes, Helen, that's what we used to say when people would be talking off to the side. We'd be talk they'd be talking about the M store. And that's when I would always tell them, use your coupon on frames, on candies, on decorations. Leave the stamp stuff alone. Stampin' Up! stuff is way better than the stuff you can get at the M store or the H store. Okay, and so I'm just spacing these chart chocolates out. And what did there is also an HL? Yes, exactly. All right. I had to stop and think, what's HL? Uh oh. Okay, I need to scoot that a little closer together. Because otherwise, it's not going to fold down. Okay. So, note kind of fold that down so that you know where it needs to go. All right. And then we're going to take our little bag. Okay, so what do we have into this? About five minutes at most. And we're going to feed this down into the bag. Oops. Like that. Okay. And then I'm using the twine from the... Snailed it sweet, snail mail sweet. Okay, and I doubled it. Okay, that should be more than enough. Oh, I got a nice little ick from where I cut it last time. All right, so I don't know, about 20 inches, I guess. Fold it in half, you have about a 10 inch piece, and then. I wrapped it around the bag. Come on. And then I put both ends up through the hole. There you go, exactly. Okay. And 
tie a knot. Oops, 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 oops. Before you do that, I'm sorry, don't tie it yet. Okay, open it up. And I used the Valentine Keepsake stamp set. I'm using the With Love and then the little heart here. Um, Tammy, this would be a great set even to do those things with. Something sweet for someone sweet. You Have My Heart would be lovely with little hearts. So you could do a lot for the wedding with that. Okay, so with love, with the memento. And then we're just going to stamp that in the center. And blushing bride. And then I have the little flowers. And so we're just going to stamp the flowers around the with love. Cute. Again, very quick and easy. Okay, now we're going to pull our ribbon back. We're going to tuck those ends back up in there. Oh, snowflakes would be very pretty that time of year, too. Okay, and so you're just putting that twine kind of right around there, and then I just tied it into... I'm tying it into a knot to hold things into place a little better for me. And then tie your bow. Trim your ends. And ta-da! How cute. I didn't know for sure how that would look in the colors, but I think it still looks really cute. So there's one... And there's the other one, okay? Adorable, I absolutely love how they turned out. Um, I do have some of the Sahara Sand paper over there yet that I think I might do that with too, um, to make one, but cute, cute, cute. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I love how you did the bow, thanks. Okay. Any questions at all before I let you get to the rest of your evening? I'm going to watch a little bit. Thanks for that heart. I love it. Thank you. Okay, let me scoot down through here and see if I missed any questions. Hi, Nikki. We got pink just for you. All right. I think we pretty much covered everything. So if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will come back and check on them again. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thanks for sharing. Um, again, I will do a drawing on the names from yesterday and today and do a drawing for the Punch Party stamp set. Um, I don't think I'll come on tomorrow. I get my COVID vaccine tomorrow. Um, yay, I'm excited to move along with that. Um, okay, so you guys have a great night. Love you. Bye-bye.